Well, there's no way I can talk about this episode without showing this scene. I just don't know what went wrong! When this episode came out, I was only just starting to watch MLP, so I wasn't aware of all the hype that went into the first speaking appearance of Derpy, not to mention actually hearing Rainbow calling her by name. The sudden appearance followed by the sudden censoring of Derpy has long since passed, and I've often been curious as to what I would say about her had I actually been active in the fandom way back then. But looking back at the situation now, I'm still not entirely sure what to think. I can certainly understand why the fans had become so vocal about Derpy being censored, and I probably would have been among them in my own small way. But I also think that there are legitimate reasons as to why they changed this scene. I really enjoy how Derpy has been portrayed within the Brony fandom. I like seeing how she's such a kind-hearted and positive individual. Despite sometimes having a klutzy nature, she has so much love to give, especially in the stories and animations where she is shown as a mother to Dinky. But she wasn't given near enough screen time in this episode to display that amount of depth. All that was shown was her klutzy nature and even how Rainbow was getting impatient with her. If this is all you had ever seen coming from Derpy, and you didn't know anything about what the fandom has done with her character, what would you think? I for one would want the series to show Derpy in the same kind of light that she is shown within the Brony fandom. The problem is that would take up far too much screen time. She would need to become a recurring character with a lot more speaking roles, and that would take a great deal of effort on the part of the writers and the animators. She was meant to be a nod to the fans, showing that the MLP staff does care about what we want in the show. And unless she was really given the same amount of depth, I will always prefer the derpy that we have within the fandom rather than the one depicted here. And considering that this really isn't her story, let's move on to the actual episode. We see that Applejack is training for an upcoming rodeo competition. We've seen hints of her competitive nature before, so it makes sense that she has aspirations to be the best when it comes to being an athlete. But it turns out that the main reason that she wants to win this competition is to use the prize money to fix Town Hall. It's good to see that Applejack wants to do these things to help others, and again, this is certainly nothing new to her character. But after she has been gone for a week and sends home a very short message about not coming back to Ponyville, the rest of the main six are determined to find her. As they are traveling, we hear each of the main six talk about not knowing how they'd be able to face everyone in Ponyville if they came back empty-handed. And that actually sets up Applejack's motives in a way that I hadn't noticed before. Eventually, they do catch up to Applejack, but even then all she is willing to tell them is that she had been looking for a change of scenery. Of course, the rest of the main six and we as the audience don't buy that for even a second, but Applejack is quite determined to stay right where she is. In the next scene, we see Twilight, Rainbow, and Rarity trying to get the truth out of Applejack. But what really stands out here is the fact that Pinky and Fluttershy are reenacting one of the most classic scenes out of the old I Love Lucy show. Once again, the MLP staff are putting in references that only the adults would understand. And the following scene between Pinky and Applejack has become one of the more iconic scenes in the Brony fandom. Listening to Pinky talk about random nonsense non-stop makes me laugh every time I'm watching this episode. So Applejack finally gets everyone to stop pestering her by saying that she'll let everyone know what's really going on during breakfast. And ends up sealing the deal with a Pinky promise. Now, most anyone watching this scene would be able to figure out that Applejack doesn't intend on being there during breakfast, but that still doesn't change the fact that Pinky's reaction here is priceless. Applejack! You it from us! Yeah! We get an entertaining chase scene that actually gets a few more laughs from Pinky's performance. before we finally get to see what Applejack has been hiding all this time. Turns out she was too ashamed of going back to Ponyville if that meant she had to tell everyone that she couldn't fulfill her promise of winning the competition and using the prize money to fix Town Hall. Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about how Applejack is retreading the same lesson that she learned in Applebuck season, and I can certainly see a lot of similarities here. Applejack's stubbornness and pride had gotten her to try and fix a situation all on her own. And despite her friends pleading with her to see reason, she still wanted to make things work. 
But there is a distinct difference between Applejack's behavior in these two episodes. In Applebuck's season, she was determined to fulfill the promise she made in order to prove to others that she could pull it off. In the last roundup, she had already failed in her promise and was too ashamed of herself to face everyone and tell them the truth. In Applebuck's season, Applejack's pride made her want to do things on her own. In the last roundup, Applejack's shame had made her be afraid of what others would think of her if they found out the truth. But I suppose that I can agree that the story doesn't leave that much of an impression on me. This doesn't seem like a life-changing experience for Applejack, and I didn't really think any differently about her afterwards. With that said, however, I thoroughly enjoyed watching this episode again because of the standout comedic moments. And I'm not talking about Derpy's performance. Even though her scenes make me smile, it is Pinky's scenes that make me laugh. This episode has some of her funniest lines and hilarious reactions of the entire series. Pinky's performance is really what makes this episode for me, which actually makes me feel bad for Applejack here because this episode is supposed to be about her. At least with Applebuck's season, Applejack really stands out with her humorous moments as well as getting some growth as a character. The story here does make us want to understand why Applejack wouldn't want to come back to Ponyville, but in the end, it doesn't seem like much has really changed for her character. I do like this episode for its comedy, but it always leaves me feeling a little sorry that Applejack doesn't really stand out in her own episode. So it becomes kind of a mixed bag every time I'm watching this story. But what do you think? Given the controversial nature of Derpy's appearance, do you think it was a good or bad decision to censor her first speaking role? Do you think that Derpy should ever be given that kind of opportunity again? Or do you prefer the way that she is currently depicted in the fandom? Do you think that Applejack should have been given more to help her stand out in this episode? Or perhaps you see something about her already that helped her to shine here? I would like to hear your thoughts about the last roundup, and let us hope to see more depth to Applejack and her future stories. I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you. I would work in a kumquat orchard just so I could say kumquat all day! Kumquat, kumquat, kumquat!